Welcome, friends. Uh, we are now coming to hopefully the end of another week uh, under the stay-at-home orders, and hopefully some of you are getting back to work. Some opportunities are beginning to open, especially those of you who are working in the construction trades and in what we call the, the non-essential medical treatment area, which is kind of a strange concept because if you need a surgery, um, we're talking about things that are more than just cosmetic surgery, surgery like your eye lift or your tummy tuck. We're talking about a certain cancer surgeries and things of that nature that uh, have been put on hold and have been affecting the life of other people. So uh, we're praying that these things will uh, resolve themselves very quickly. But you know, one of the things I think we have to keep in mind is that we always need to remember that God is in the moment that he's in our particular individual circumstances, that not only does he look over important people or spiritual people or nations, but he looks upon the affairs of every single individual. That it's not just the Christian who can sit back and say, you know, God has ordained the events of my life. I think that's true of the non-Christian. In fact, I was reading something that Chuck Swindoll wrote um, in uh, one of his books where he was talking about uh, quoting or quoting his mentor, which was Ray Stedman. And Ray Stedman was talking about how that he knew a mariner, a, a seaman, who uh, was uh, tra talking about being caught in a storm and the ship was being overflowed by water. And it was so threatening and so dangerous that he didn't really expect that anybody was going to survive. And he made this interesting statement. He said, that night, God heard the voice of many a stranger. I thought that's such a great statement because people who had never called out to God in that moment were calling out to him. We call them foxhole Christians uh, because of the experience that many in war have when they are under the threat of death and the carnage of war. They cry out to God and ask for mercy. And I'm always touched by how many of those people who cry out to God found themselves surviving and being saved often miraculously. I think it's important for us to, to have that perspective because, first of all, we recognize that every conversion is a miracle. Uh, there's nobody who comes to Christ who does so on their own or through their own volition. It is a momentary miracle. But as Alan Redpath put it so well once, as he says, a conversion takes an instant, is a miracle of an instant, but he says, it takes a lifetime to make a saint. It takes a lifetime to make a saint. And that's why just a passage I would quote to you today is in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, the very last verse of that chapter. He says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. We give up when we feel like what we're doing is, is fruitless or useless. I don't care who you are. If you come to the conclusion what you're doing is a fruitless endeavor and has no benefit to it, you're going to quit. You're not going to finish the project. You're saying, what's the use? And that doesn't mean that you're weak in character. It means that you're maybe weak in faith or you've lost perspective because every one of us struggles with moments of faithfulness, faithlessness where we kind of give out and give in. But Paul's word is simply saying, you know, because of the resurrection, that's the context of chapter 15, because we know the end result is going to be that we're going to be changed, we're going to be miraculously transformed, we're going to be living and reigning with Christ, uh, and, and not only in heaven, but we're going to return with him and walk the earth with him and live and reign with him for a millennium, and then move from there into our new digs, which is a new heaven and new earth, after this earth and this heaven are destroyed. You know, as uh, Peter put it this way, seeing that everything is going to be burnt up, what manner of men ought we to be in all holiness and godly conversation? And I think that's really the moment right now where no matter what we're going through, no matter how difficult that challenge is, that we don't give up. We, we don't give up on a marriage because it becomes difficult. We don't give up on our children because they become rebellious and disobedient or drift away from the faith and reject what we hold holy. We, we don't give up on a, on a commitment that we made simply because the commitment has gotten hard. Uh, we don't give up on forgiving people who have transgressed against us just because it hurts so bad when they did betray us. All those things are, are things that every one of us struggle with not giving up on on a, on a large basis. I know there are people right now who are going through recovery from addictions and they just want to give up because it was easier to go back and begin to fall into that, that deadly lifestyle once again. And the word that God always says is, 
Don't give up because your labor is not in vain. Your toil is not meaningless. It has depth and meaning to it. And I know you may be sitting there at home and saying, well, I spend most of my day just sitting here and I read my Bible and I pray and I watch television and then I watch some more television. And when I've got done watching television, I watch some more television. And you can begin to feel that kind of futility. By the way, watching a lot of television actually makes you feel more depressed. Um, studies on that have shown that people who binge watch a lot of TV struggle more with depression. Uh, marriages that fall apart have a higher percentage of time that they spend watching TV than talking to each other and doing something fruitful. So just kind of a side point there. But the simple fact is that as we continue to seek the Lord, and, and we can continue to pray for opportunities to bless other people and to just share what God's doing in our life. That is a labor that God sees, and that is a labor he says he will not forget. He is not unfaithful, the writer of Hebrews says, to forget your labor of love. And you know one of the greatest labors of love there is? Is when you pray for people. When you pray for people, pray that God would heal them, fix them, save them, uh, just rectify and change them. That is a labor of love. And if you've never prayed like that or prayed for those kind of things, you haven't experienced how hard that can be sometimes. But it's a labor of love that is of great worth and of great value. And I would just really encourage you to do at least that. Maybe that's the most we can do. That's the best we can do. But even, even a person who is stuck in a wheelchair can pray or laid flat in a bed with a stroke can pray. God uses that, and that's a labor of love at that moment that God would just use these moments of your life to touch that of another. Just pray you be encouraged and uh, looking forward to our weekend of service. I go in this afternoon. I tape a show for the midweek. I, I go in later on to tape another show for the weekend service. My staff works busily putting all of that together, and you don't know how much work they have to go through to compile all of that. They, they really impress me and bless me by how hard they work and all the sacrifice they're making just to keep information. Our children's ministers who are producing stuff on a daily basis to help you guys stay connected. Uh, pray for them. Pray for them that they would not get discouraged because I know a lot of times they get real tired. And I just pray for them that the Lord would just continue to encourage them and keep them healthy. Uh, frankly, we can't afford for any of them to get sick at this point. So pray that God keeps them upright and moving forward and, and being effective for the kingdom. And um, look forward to the day. It seems like it's getting closer and closer where we'll be able to begin to gather together and worship as a family. And I think we'll all see that time differently. It'll change us. It has already. God bless you in Jesus' name.